Uh, the snail carried caddis, the, the caney does, actual house and caddis hatches. Typically, uh, you will see them more around October or so. Um, we always will we use this caddis as, say, a, a, a top fly and maybe drop a nymph or a midge underneath it and use this more as an indicator for these flies. Um, and at times, they'll just, just hit it on account of coloration, I believe. Parachute atom, there are mayflies, you know, on the Caney Fort. And the parachute atoms is just one of those ge generic mayflies uh, patterns that can uh, match out with several different, you know, species of varieties of mayflies. Stimulator, I don't know what it is. It could be possibly a, a big woolly worm to a degree. It can be even a, a grasshopper substitute. But it's just a good all around, you know, searching dry fly for any water. Your pheasant tail nymph uh, is a great mayfly nymph or even crane fly larva imitation. Brassy is kind of like, uh, more like a kind of like, you know, either a, 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 a mayfly Im nymph imitation or possibly even aquatic worms that are in the water system. Your um, soft tackle wet fly is basically fished in the surface. It just barely does sink in the surface and which represents emerging flies, you know, throughout any time of the year where it could be uh, mayflies, caddis, uh, even midges for that matter. It could, you know, represent the emerger of, of those patterns. And this would be your uh, zebra midges, which would be your, like your midge larvae and stuff as they are down in the bottom of the water column before they start, you know, hatching and coming up. Uh, woody booger, various different colors. Uh, this here could be a sculpin pattern. It can, you get a different color, it could be a minnow pattern. You get a, you know, even crayfish patterns. With woody booger, we can kind of simulate several different, you know, uh, food sources in the in the water. Cicadas. It's just uh, we have what 13, 17, seven year hatches I believe on cicadas. When it happens you definitely want cicadas in your box. Uh, any other time of year I don't, I've never had them hit it so. Ants. Ants are a natural food source pretty much during the warmer months of any year. And um, most folks don't think an ant is capable of catching big fish, but uh, big fish like ants too. You mentioned the drops, uh, or having the, these off a dropper. About how far would you be trailing that? Yeah, a lot of them it would depend on the uh, water depth. Um, most of the time, um, we'll drop it about a foot to two foot below the, the dry line when we're doing a dropper. And getting down deep, that's that's kind of a key, isn't it? As much as they're... On your nymph patterns and, and you know, larva pa patterns like that, yes. Uh, hence uh, the bead heads on these three here, um, which will get them deeper. We also use a split shot or some putty that we can put on the leader to help get the fly down deeper as well, too. Or even a bigger fly with a bigger, heavier bead to help get it down deeper, so... And then, as far as uh, colors on on the midges in particular, is it is it is that an important uh, aspect to to try to match up, or is it? It pretty much is. Uh, if you had to have one color, that would be the black zebra midge. I mean, I haven't seen a tail water yet where you couldn't catch trout on it. So. Um, and yeah, and then as far as la as far as like, times to go, obviously you got generation schedules to kind of think about. Mm -hmm. When when should you be trying to, to get out on the water there? Well, a lot of, a lot of you folks are uh, want to be out there at daylight. Uh, daylight and last light of the day are your better chances of your bigger fish. That's when they are more um, more active, and they know that most of us may have given up and went home for the day. So that's when they become more active. Um, Back in the younger days, I would fish a lot at night, um, simply because you're undercover, they're undercover from the darkness, and they're more active than, you know, speeding at night as well, too. So, your first light and last light 
are typically your best shots at your bigger fish. During the day, uh, you have way too much going on for the most part, and they just hide out, out of the way most of the time. You'd be surprised at how many people will walk right by a big fish and never see it. He just lays there and just doesn't show himself. And as far as the generation, I've heard kind of heard it heard it said that you know right after right when the water's coming up is really a good active time it is and that's also gotten a lot of people stranded too well, that's the thing you kind of got to watch out for that because yes. you can uh, it can come up on <clears throat> when they first turn the water on actually the first pulse starts pushing pushing debris and it starts washing say the nymphal pattern and thing like that it will wash them off and you know the feet, uh, fish will start feeding on that most folks will be out there having a slow day and all of a sudden, boom, they're catching or getting a bite every cast where they don't want to leave. Next thing you know, they're stuck. Um, same on the falling water. Once the water starts dropping out to a certain extent, they once again start feeding. Once it starts dropping a little bit lower, they'll feed heavily as it's dropping too. And then a lot of times when it drops completely out, that's when it slows back down some because they put on a pretty good feast while it was dropping, so.